Hi, my name is Kay Collins, also known as OK Quilting, and this video is going to show you two ways to build an edge-to-edge -edge design in Pro Stitcher. First, I'm going to show you the official HQ way, and then I'm going to show you the Kay Collins is a control freak way, and uh, and you can choose. And sometimes, you know, you might pick one, and sometimes you might pick the other. But it's nice to have a couple of uh, tools in your toolbox when you're building edge-to-edge -edge designs. So we are going to be using Pro Stitcher in um, simulation tonight. So please know that my crosshairs are green. And don't worry, it, this works exactly the same on your tablet as it will as I show it to you. All right, so let's get started. Here we are in Pro Stitcher. And the first thing I need to have is an area. So I want to be in my area tab. And one way that's easy to do this, obviously I can't move my uh, machine, but I can still click on two corner. And I still get a ding. And I can come over here and I can actually override this. So I'm just gonna tell it that I want to make my quilt, let's say that it's 60 by 80. Okay, and then when I click my my little house button, my refresh, so technically it's called refresh, right? I, um, but it's the little house. Then I will be able to see the whole screen. So now we're ready to put a design in. So here first, we're going to do kind of the official handy quilter way. So I will come up to file and I'll click on file and then design and then open. Now this is going to take me into a place that you don't have. Here we go. We want to be in our C drive, in, in our designs, and then we're going to go into the one file, one dash PS designs. Now there are four options here. There's blocks, continuous line, corners, and triangles. Make sure you're using a continuous line design. So let's go ahead and click on those, and these are the designs that I can use. Um, so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and pick the balloon one. All right, so there's my design. It came in at my crosshairs because that's how I have my Pro Stitcher set up. Now I'm going to go up to my repeat tab. So I'm up on the top on the tabs and I click on repeat. And then I'm going to come down here to, um, over here on the side in my sidebar. Oh. Things are so, I can't even see where it is. Okay, there it is. Um, so I have two buttons right here in the middle, fill and stretch. So I will click fill first. And what fill does is it takes that design and it puts it into your space as many times as it can without going over. All right, and then what I could do is I could go ahead and stretch this horizontally and I can stretch it vertically. So I'm going to click on vertical and then click stretch again and it will stretch up. So now you have to decide are you okay with how this looks. So this looks pretty good at the top um, and you know the spacing looks fine. You know I'm looking at this I've never actually pulled up this design before. I'm wondering if this is actually a wrap design. But one thing that concerns me over here on the side are these holes. That's a lot of empty space where there's nothing going on. Uh, just for kicks, let's go over and click on wrap and let's see how different this looks. Now I have to go back, I was in vertical, I have to go back to horizontal because I want, I would want this to wrap horizontally. And how we would want that would, to work was I would want my row to be half offset. So I'm going to click this button right here. Okay, now that clearly is going to look better. So let's go ahead and close my gap. Okay, whoops. Oh, mistake, mistake. Okay, so I just made a mistake that you will probably make. So let me show you how to do it. I just closed my horizontal gap. That's not what I wanted to do. So it was at zero. I'm just going to clear this out and go back to zero enter. Okay, that should have fixed it. What I really want to change is my vertical gap. I want to snug these lines together. So let's click on vertical. Now let's go back down here to gap. 
and let's click them up a little bit closer together. Now I actually, can you see now that things are not connected? Honestly, I, I, you know, we all make mistakes sometimes and this stuff happens and this is how I, if this really happened to me at this point, I would go ahead and click on this. I would go file, close, selected, and just get rid of the whole thing. Then I would go file, design, open. And I don't have to actually click on open because right here I have the balloon continuous line. So I can click it again. And we're just going to go through, honestly, it's so quick to just do it again. So let's go to our repeat and let's go ahead and fill it and and we can go ahead and stretch it and let's go to horizontal and stretch it all right so it looks pretty much like it did last time let's go ahead and wrap it so we're going to wrap we need to be in horizontal and we're going to click the half row here all right now we want to change our gap but we don't want to be in horizontal we want to change the vertical gap so i click on vertical again now I'm going to close my gap a little bit. Now this time if I zoom in, you can see that things are still attached. I didn't mess things up this time, so that's good. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't want to, I think about an inch is probably probably the right gap for this. Now you have to decide, do you like how that looks? And I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it covers the top, it covers the bottom. So at this point, I would baseline it and then I would save it. So I would go file, save. Now, you have a choice here. You can save as a workspace, which I do often, or you can save as selected. If you are having a lot of motor errors and problems like that, I'm gonna suggest that maybe you try saving as selected. So let's go ahead and do that just in case you've never seen that before. So you can go to selected now it's going to want to save that in our continuous lines folder and I don't think that's a great idea. So in my C drive, I, I would come back up. So I'm in my C drive here. Oh, let's see if I can show you what I just did. All I did was I clicked up here in the green. All right. And, and so I'm in the green and I just want to make another folder and I don't actually have to close it. I can just come up here and click this folder and I would make a new folder that I could put selected edge to edges in or something. Okay. Now I think I already have, let's, let's go look. I'm pretty sure that I have something down here. Oh, maybe I don't. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do it. So let's, so I'm going to click on the folder and I'm going to put, you know what? I can just call it edge to edge. I just don't want to, I don't like having those things mucking up my, um, my folder. Oh, okay. Now a little issue. It actually put it into that folder, which is not what we want. We really do want to just be up here and see. So I wonder if I close that. And we do it again. If I just call it edge to edge. We're just having a night here tonight, aren't we? Okay, that's what we want. We want it to be C colon edge to edge. We just want it to be right here somewhere. It's gonna it's showing up down bottom now. Okay, so so do click on your green and then put it in this way. Don't keep it open. I'm gonna have to now come up here and go to my designs and go to my continuous lines. And I'm going to have to delete this folder, which is going to be difficult right now. We're just not going to worry about it. Okay. But I would go ahead and save this design there. Well, I'm not going to bother to do that right now. So that's one way to save an edge to edge. So now I want to get rid of this and that's how HQ has us teach beginners. All right. But that is not how I build mine. So now let me show you how I build mine. So I'm going to go ahead and go to, I'm in file. I'm going to go to close and close selected. So now I, I, the reason I did that was because I, it keeps my area there. So I don't have to build it again. I'm just being lazy. So let's go ahead and open another design. We can open the same exact design. So let's go ahead and open balloon continuous line. All right. So how I do this 
is that I would actually probably take this design and put it maybe how I think I'd like it to fall on that top line. I generally know that not everything's always going to line up, so if it's going to crop, I'm happy with it cropping through the middle of those balloons. Now I'm going to go to the Repeat tab, and I'm going to fill in my horizontal, let's see, let me hit my home button, okay, horizontal, I'm just going to click until it is wider than my area. I want it to be wider. If you noticed, when I when I put it in over here, I was wider. Now I might even go like that. Okay, I want it to be completely covering. And then, because I know now that this is going to be a wrap, I'm going to just add one more. All right, so now I have, have it going wide. Now I'm going to go to vertical, and I'm just going to add until I am way, I'm going to give myself a couple extras past my pink line. I'm going to crop this anyways. Now, last time, I want you to realize these are balloons. And if we stretch these and we use the fill and stretch, that was no problem. But if I'm doing ABCs and then I use the fill and stretch, it might really change how those look. So that's why I don't like to use fill and stretch. So um, at, with this, I haven't changed that design. It's not resized or anything. I could resize it. If I were going to resize it, I would do that before I started doing all the repeats. All right, but I have now filled the whole area with the design that is not stretched at all. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this, but now I want to wrap it. So I'm going to click on wrap. I need to be in horizontal and I need to click this little half button, and I like that. Now we remember that we have to close our gap, and it's not horizontal, it's vertical. So let's go ahead and close our gap. And I kinda, now remember, I add all these extra rows down here, and look, now they're all gone. But my whole space is covered and looks really good. I like that. So at this point, I would go ahead and I would baseline. So now all those things are locked together. And now I'm going to go to my modify tab and I'm going to press crop. And I'm going to come over here to my sidebar and I'm going to click on the outside because I want to click, I want to get rid of everything that's on the outside of my area. And then I'm going to close my edges. When I so this is edges, this button, and we call that closing our edges. When I do that, what I'm doing is I am giving Pro Stitcher permission to use my pink area line and to stitch any crazy thing it wants to. It's going to be a straight line, okay? It's not really going to be crazy. But it's going to use that straight pink line to stitch to get wherever it needs to go, and there will be overstitching. I'm okay with that because... I always set up my edge to edges so that they're actually off the edge of my quilt. So I don't care if it overstitches, that's just fine with me. At this point, I would baseline again, and then I would save. So file, save, and you can save as a workspace. So last time we saved as selected, we could save as a workspace, and that takes you into the C designs, but it's in the workspace. Um, if you click on this little line down here it will bring this up you can clear out the name right here and i could i could call this whatever i wanted to like maybe i always rename things and if this if this were a quilt that i was quilting for someone i would say balloon allison or something you know just so i knew who it was from i would probably put their name in first and then the name of the quilt and then i save that and now, this is all ready to go. The other thing I do that's different maybe from other people is if I'm ready to start quilting this, I am going to delete my area because it drives me crazy to have my design float up in the area and disappear. I don't know why that bothers me so much, but it does. So what I do is I actually, I'm just going to, I could go file, clear, Oh, file. Area, 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 clear. Oh, wait a minute. I'm still in an old version. So clear is usually right here. Um, clear is in the sidebar 
on my version. I need to fix that. So now this is gone and I can go ahead to, and take this. I can put this on a thumb drive. Even though I've done it in simulation on my laptop, this is ready to go. I can put this onto a thumb drive and take it to my machine and I am ready to go. Um, so, so don't be scared of playing with simulation. And now you know two ways to set up an edge to edge. You know, um, I call it the fill and stretch way, which is how we teach HQ be beginners, or the, uh, I call it the K Collins control freak way. So whichever way works for you, I, I hope you give them both a try because sometimes the fill works just great. And sometimes if it's, sometimes it just makes your design look weird and you're going to need to know how to be a control freak and to boss pro stitcher around. That's our job. You guys, we got a boss pro stitcher around. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, go ahead. I have a newsletter that I send out once a month. Go, go over to okquilting.com and you can sign up for my newsletter. I always have um, news about what's going on and my schedule where I'm teaching. And uh, I'd love to see you in a class sometime. So have fun quilting and I'll see you soon. Bye.